Good morning. So I just, I just woke up from another prophetic dream, man. And uh, I've been trying to work out for like the last 10, 20 minutes, was that of the Lord or not? I feel that it was, but I wasn't sure. I was just sitting here drinking my coffee, as I do in the morning, getting a bit of fresh air and that. And um, I was thinking, well, was it of you and the Lord? And I kept going over in my head like, yes, yes it is. Yes, it is from the Lord, it was from the Lord. And then suddenly it hit me. <laughs> Yesterday morning I went up the front of our church for a bit of prayer, yeah? Because they did like an article. And uh, a lovely guy, uh, Matt, I'm sure he'd be all right with me using his name on here, uh, prayed for me. And he said, uh, you know, Lord, please increase uh, Dan's YouTube channel. Keep keep using him. And I was standing there and I was like, yeah, 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 do that, you know. Um, and, then, and that's what's just come to my mind as I was asking the Lord, is this of you? You know, and it's like, ah, that's what it was. It is of the Lord, I'm sure it is. But you pray about this and wear this up for yourself. The other thing that I want to say is, is if you feel like you don't have any sort of purpose in your life, then pray and ask for a purpose, because the Lord will give you a purpose. Anyway, so let's get into the dream that I had last night. And uh, the dream that I had, man, very, very vivid. I mean, it was so, like, real. Well, that's how it felt. It felt so real that I literally, I feel like grabbing my survival kit now, man, and bugging out to my location like right now. It felt like it really happened last night to me. Anyway, let's get into it. So in my dream, it was um, there's like sections of it, different parts of it, you know what I mean, where you, you see different parts at different times, but I believe I was in the same area. Anyway, as usual, it was dark. It was either night time or, or it was darkness. In a lot of these end time dreams, I always see darkness, like physical darkness, okay? Um, anyway, this place I was in was like physical darkness. And I was standing uh, near, or pretty much on, a very, very high bridge. Um, and there were some other people there with me. <clears throat> and I, I stepped onto this bridge, and I looked down at the water below. And I, I said to the guy with me, I said, uh, God, it's very, very high up here, mate. I, I said, like, wow, like, you know, there's a real drop between, like, the top of where the bridge is, where we walk in, and, and the sea. So that's the sea, the bridge up here. I was looking over the edge, and I was like, whoa, that's... That's a that's a real drop, you know. And I, I turned to the guy next to me and I said, um, this is very much like that San Francisco bridge, you know, like the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, I said, and that's the one I was referring to, but I called it San Francisco Bridge. And he went, yeah, yeah, it's very similar, very similar. And I was like, yeah. And I was looking over the edge and I was thinking, God, that's quite a drop. Anyway, in my dream, I, I turned around behind me and I was walking off and I was looking at, like like the side of a road, like a hill or something, like some rocks and stuff, and I was just like messing around with something. And um, anyway, I basically turned around again, literally, must have been only 30 seconds to a minute looking at the side of this road. I turned around again, I couldn't believe it. Like, the water was up at the level of the bridge where you would walk, and there was a ferocious storm. Um, you know, they were... <laughs> And the wind was blowing very, very quickly and there were black, dark clouds. And, and this man was sort of standing on the bridge in front of me. And I said, like, what, what the heck is going on? Like, what, what's going on here? Uh, and, and I, like, literally, like, sorry, I'm going to have to act some of this out. I, I walked back on the bridge and you know where you would look over the edge? The water was here. It wasn't right the way down there. It was here. And there was water blowing onto the bridge from the right. And... Like, I guess that was out towards sea, and that'd be, I don't know where, where, where that direction went, but in towards a town or city or something. But it was, it was coming from out towards sea, very strong wind and water just poof, over the bridge. Poof, and, and the level of the, the height of the water was at where you'd be walking. And I was like, what was this? You know, what is this? And, and the water was moving very, very, very quickly, and there was just tops of it going over the bridge and hitting the bridge. And I was looking at it, and I was just like, I said to him, look, we've got to get back, mate. We've, we've got to go this way, you know, because I think my intention was to cross that bridge, but it was no longer crossable. You couldn't cross it. Um, and I was just uh, kind of really freaked out about it. I mean, you know, I didn't realise at the time, guys, in my dream, but now looking back on it, I can see that was a tsunami I was witnessing, but I, I didn't know it at the time in the dream just saw this water coming over and parts of the bridge was uh, 
further down you could see the parts of the bridge was being smashed off by this this water uh, but the water wasn't coming up round to where i was it was going that way you know in in front of me this way you know um and and I, I grabbed the guy on the bridge in front of me and he grabbed a couple of other people's hands and we kind of made like a string and we we ran off the bridge together and then the scene changed this is what i mean by different sections of parts of my dream but the scene then changed so the next part of my dream i was standing on this uh, kind of like big hill going up and at the top of this hill was like uh, like a sort of mountain type thing or the peak of a mountain um it, it, it was going up very high um uh, and it was dark again it was it's always dark it was proper dark but it was dark in a way that i could still see so like the moonlight i guess if that was the moon reflecting down gave us some sort of visibility so that we could still sort of see and what i noticed was i was walking up this hill i was traveling up it but i i stopped for a moment and uh, i was i was with some other people but i was looking at the peak of this mountain and um you could see things in the distance uh like starting to happen like there were i don't know what you want to call it but it was like a, a sort of tornado starting from the ground going up in the distance right off in the distance and you, you you could see it going up and you could see like weird things happening man like the only way that i can describe it is you know where the bible says that in the end you will see signs and wonders in the sky and, and signs and wonders well it was like there was weird things happening that i can't even put into words like kind of like signs in the sky and, and, and wonders guys i'm sorry that's the only way i can explain it it was like signs and wonders and weird kind of tornadoes coming off of the ground and weird lights and weird stuff going in the sky I, I can't explain it in any other way but it was a sign of wonder that's the only way i can explain it and i was just looking at it you also had this feeling like something terribly bad was about to happen and we we all just <sighs> i feel the shivers now thinking about it you, we were just staring at the top of this mountain and I was thinking to myself in my dream, am I even safe here, you know? I was thinking, is a tsunami about to come over the top of that mountain? You, you've always got this feeling like something's about to happen, like you're, you're never quite safe. You're always on the move, you know, in these dreams that I have. And I'm telling you, like, they're so vivid, it feels like it really happened. I feel like I was really there last night, you know? Um, and I guess that's what the Lord does with us. So just come out of the dream for a second. When the Lord gives us these dreams, we see it like we're really there, like we're really experiencing it, if you get these dreams as well. Um, and I see it as like glimpses of the future, you know? Anyway, getting back into the dream. So, um, the scene flashed again, and we had just got to like the top of this, this mountain or wherever we were, and there were some other Christians up there. And they were in this sort of shelter uh, near, a, near a kind of like forest. It was, it was still on this hill, but at the top of it, but this sort of shelter and there was like a junction, a crossroad and it was, it was dark and I was, these other Christians were sitting there and they had like these, um, these green kind of like racks that you'd put like a beer glass on in a pub. They had some there with like some squash and juice on there. So they basically carried it up and they were wearing like, uh, like kind of survival gear type stuff. Like, you know, kind of like hiking gear and waterproof clothing and there were a few Christians there and they, it was like this this shelter, like this old derelict shelter that they found. And they were like camping out there. And uh, they were the sort of Christians that I would class as cheesy Christians. Now, don't get me the wrong way by this, all right? <laughs> but they were the sort of Christians that, you know, you would sit around a campfire and sing, Come by, oh my Lord, come by. <laughs> they were like that, you know, the cheesy type, you know. But don't get me wrong, man, because... You know, I grew up with, like, uh, the cheesy type, you know. <laughs> I grew up with some of them, and actually I felt really homely with them. I felt I was at, like, home with them. And they, you know, we, we sat down and they, like, they welcomed me and these others in. And, and they were sitting there with, like, some kind of a weird list. And they said, let's, like, play a game. And we were playing some sort of a weird game. and But, like, a, a cheesy game, like a quiz night kind of game, you know. And we're all just, <laughs> we're all just sitting there, like, you know. But... On me <clears throat> and they were telling us how they roll and stuff you know and how they how they are you know i guess guys like you know i've been real with you man i guess they was some sort of a community you know surviving it and um 
Anyway, we were there for like the night and um, another group of Christians arrived. There must have been like at least 30 of them. <laughs> Makes me want to cry, man, thinking about it actually, because it, it was so vivid, man. But they, they had just hiked up this hill and um, <laughs> they stood in front of us and um, I, I didn't want to argue with these guys because I'd only just joined them myself with my group of like uh, Christian buddies and that, you know. And um, this group, they had just arrived and they were very tired and they were very hungry. And I saw this one man, he was very tired and hungry and he said, oh, we've just travelled like hours from that direction up this hill. Please, will you let us um, camp with you, he said to us. And uh, there was like this section outside of this like abandoned hut thing. And the the guy from the cheesy Christian group said, uh, no, sorry, we can't allow you to stay there. And I was thinking in my head the whole time, please, please let him stay. Please let them stay. Please don't turn him away. And he said, sorry, we, we can't have you camp in there. You, you've got to go on. And I felt like, oh, man, I felt uh, distraught, you know. Uh, well, how could you turn them away, man? They're, they're fellow Christians, you know. Um, and the, the guy that he said it to was standing there, and he, he was kind of upset but he understood like you know and he understood that they had to go on and he was saying look please just let us camp then I thought to myself with these cheesy Christians that I've met I thought how dare you what gives you the right to turn these people away what gives you the right you don't own this land here you know we're, we're all out here surviving together like that's this is a derelict shelter this is what I was thinking in my head this is a derelict shelter and that that land you don't own mate you know and they just want to camp with us like you know <sighs> But I thought at the same time, well, don't argue with him because he could cast me out there. You know, we could be back out there. I mean, we're out there anyway, but this guy had food and stuff and water. And, you know, the more of us that stick together, the better, like, you know. And um, I thought I'd better not argue with him. You know, I'm thinking I'm tired myself. I've just, I've, I've seen all sorts of horrendous crap until I got to this point in my dream, like, you know. And it's like we were all of a similar mindset. We had all been travelling far and survive horrendous events and to get to that point, you know. And uh, it was hard, man. You know, I want to stress to you, man, that it's hard. You know, if you're, you're watching this right now, you don't, you haven't seen it in the way that I've seen it. You, you, may, you may have had dreams like this or not, but I'm getting glimpses of the future here, guys, from our Lord. To warn you of what's coming, you know. So this is out of the dream now. I'm just talking to you for real, man. And guys, the stuff that we're going to experience is going to be very hard. You need to understand this. It's, it's mentally exhausting. It's mentally draining. Physically draining. Emotionally draining. This stuff that's coming is not going to be easy. You need to understand that. You really need to understand this. You really need to understand this. In the future, when you get to that point, yeah? Remember me telling you about it. Remember that you were pre-warned. Anyway. So, he told them to move on. And I thought it was unacceptable. And out of the dream, now, for real, if you are a part of a Christian community, or will be a part of a community in the future when this stuff comes along, you do not turn other Christians away. Okay, please do not take this in a bad way, but, you know, and I know this stuff hasn't happened yet, but if you are Christians and other Christians approach you, do not turn them away. You do not turn them away, okay? I'm not having a go at you, but I'm just saying you please remember this, okay? Other Christians, whether you know them or not, the Lord may lead them to your community. He may lead them to your spot. We are to look after one another. The only, and I, I believe that the Lord gave that to me in the dream to tell us this, okay? You do not ever push other Christians away. Upset me, man. Really upset me. We're going to stick together in this. And we look after each other until our Lord returns for us. And we, we also look after other Christians 
that come our way in our communities in the future when hell is kicking off around us and we look after them. No matter how limited food and water you may think you have, no matter how many limited space you may think you have in your community or, or location or wherever you will be in the future, man, you do not push them away because our Lord can provide their needs and your needs and my needs. Remember the Lord turned a loaf of bread and a, and a fish and fed 5,000 with it, man. I'm telling you, these dreams are so vivid, man, that it feels like I really experienced that last night, you know? And please do not turn anyone away in the future, man. Because we've got to stick together. It's going to be so hard. It's going to be so hard. And I know that right now you don't see it, but you will. So that was the prophetic dream, man. <sighs> yeah, we've got to look after each other, okay? We've got to look after each other. All right, again, as usual, in the description below is a link to Christian communities. Please join it. Connect together with other Christians and prepare for the times ahead. Get a location sorted out. You see, the thing is, a lot of us will prepare and a lot of us will be in communities and have locations, but then a lot of us won't. And when you're making your way to these safe havens that the Lord has put in us and asking us to build and stuff, you may experience some horrible things. I know this seems like a bit far-fetched to you right now. I know that, I know, you know, like... If I could hop in through the screen right now and just like grab your face, but not in a horrible way, just grab your face like this and, and talk to you, you know. I, I would say this with the most sincerest of heart, you know. What is coming is hard. It's going to be really hard. You, you're you going to really struggle with it, okay. You, you're not going to find it easy. It's hard, okay. And that's... That's why our Lord is giving us these dreams right now to share with you guys, you know. A lot of you aren't going to cope with it. You're going to really struggle. I'm being real and I'm just telling it as it is. I'm not making it up. I'm not glamming it up to be anything glorious. But... You're going to struggle. And it's so important that now we root ourselves in the Lord Jesus like more than ever before. We have to rely on him now in everything that we do. In everything that we do. Because when these times come about, he will literally be your strength. He'll be the one that will get you through. He will lead you and guide you. You're going to need him more than you, you can even imagine. You're going to need the Lord more than you can even imagine, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. The only reason that you're seeing me being emotional right now and coming across like this is because I'm getting glimpses and, you know, dreams where the Lord is showing me the future as if I've just lived the future to share it with you. Now, last night was so vivid to me, I really felt like I'd just experienced that. For the emotions with it, you know, to share it with you, it's gonna be hard. You must understand. But if you're rooted in the Lord and you have a good plan in place now, it will be easier for you then. Please try and understand what I'm trying to share with you, man. This is the real deal, this stuff's coming. I don't even know what to refer it to, man. <laughs> Go and watch a war film from World War Two and see what the soldiers say. You know, they said that they knew war was coming, but they didn't think it was going to be that bad. Well, you know the end time stuff's coming, but you don't know how bad it's going to be just yet. You know, it's not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, really hard. But our Lord loves us so much, which is why he is pre-warning us now. 
He loves us so much, he is pre-warning you and me. And he is telling you how to prepare, and are you going to listen to him? We need to form communities, we need to find safe locations. The quicker we do this, the better. But when those times come along, you may not need to experience tsunamis coming at you, you may not need to experience people hunting you down, trying to kill you, like, you know... You might not need to experience any of this. It'll be a case of you grab your survival gear, all the food and water that you've stocked up, and you meet your fellow brothers and sisters at that location and pray for protection. And for you, it could be a case of just staying there until our Lord returns and not experiencing all the nasty and horrible things that will be going on. Or you may be experiencing some of it, but nowhere near to what you could be experiencing if you didn't prepare. Please take heed. It will be a hopeless world and a hopeless situation. And even for the Christians, it will be hard. In fact, I'd probably say more so. Because of those in the Antichrist system who have the mark of the beast will still be able to buy and sell for a while, we won't be able to. They may be able to live some sort of a normalish life maybe for a couple of years on, longer than us, will be off grid from the beginning, as soon as that mark comes out, world law. But you do not take that mark. The Bible says if you take it, you will spend an eternity in hell. If you take the name of the beast, the number of the beast, or the mark of the beast, you will spend eternity in hell. Do not be fooled. Do not think that's the easier option. Because if you think about it like this, an eternity is a heck of a lot longer than your life on this earth. An eternity is forever. If you compare, even if you live to 100 years old, it is like a speck. It's like an atom compared to an eternity. So, what's a couple of years here surviving through hardship when you can get into heaven for an eternity? You know what I'm saying? Please, please prepare yourself. Mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally get closer to the lord than you've ever been in your life now make sure he is number one make sure he guides your every step man when this stuff comes along he will guide you and lead you prepare with your brothers and sisters in the lord find a location in the description below christian communities you're welcome to join it please we must prepare together now I'll see you again soon. Be safe. God bless you.